Okay, there we go. So, all right, we're going to do a quick demo on um, how materials work in, in Marmoset. So, materials are great. They're lots of fun. But they can be a bit um, a bit confusing at first, because it's like it's a couple different inputs in order to get what you want. So I'm going to start, uh, generally speaking, uh, starting with a color map is your best bet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demo here uh, three different kinds of materials. I'm going to do uh, plastic, wood, and metal. And we're going to have some fun with, um, with what, those can, what, what those can be later. So first things first, yeah, you apply your color map to your object. Um, and it looks, uh, by default, Marmoset sets stuff to non-metal and 30% uh, rough. So what you get is this um, slight highlight. Um, it's, it's not reflecting the environment because it's not, it's not capturing any metallic reflections. And the highlight is slightly, uh, slightly glossy, slightly rough. So you get this um, a little bit of a speckled highlight for each light source. Um, just to show you what um, what these sliders do, um, roughness, uh, metalness are on a one to zero basis. So one being uh, completely rough, completely metal; zero being completely um, completely glossy, completely non-metal. So with this roughness slider, we're going to start. It starts at point three. Um, so uh, slightly rough, mostly glossy. Turn it all the way down, and you get very strong reflections. This is like glass. This is like a, a glass marble, something that's been lacquered with a very glossy finish. So this will be like um, like your wood finishes, your your um, your very very glossy paint of uh, cars in general. We'll have this like plastic, this uh, this vinyl look, uh, uh, very reflective, but also also not metal, and that's that's very important. So if we turn that back up to 0.3, or actually I'll just go up to full roughness. Um, full rough is completely matte. You can't actually see where the light's highlights are coming from, just that like there's a general brighter area that fades very smoothly into a, into a darker area. And then 50%, as, as, the, as roughness starts to go down into glossy, you start to see where the, um, where the hot spots appear, where the light sources are, and you start to see uh, environment reflections. So we'll leave that at uh, 0.5 for now. Um, so like slightly, slightly glossy. You start to see, you start to see some highlights, but generally you're not getting much detail. Metalness, on the other hand, is um, is very binary. Um, either something is metal or it's not. So gen um, metalness values that are in between tend to tend to get confusing and they don't look realistic because there aren't really things in nature that are partially metal. That just doesn't happen. Um, you can have dithered, where like um, speckles, speckles in like, spray paint can be metallic, um, but in that case you want a, a dappled um, metal map, where like you actually have little hits of little hits of white. I'll show you that later, um, and those those will be reflective, and the rest will not be reflective. So uh, metalless, so non-metal. So take it all the way up, and metallic. And, um, metalless relies very much on the roughness map in order to get its reflections in. So if we turn down um, the roughness, we start to see like this this white space that was white before um, is completely replaced by the environment reflections. Um, and what the color map does when you're working in a metalness workflow is color replaces the environment color. So um, in in the specular workflow, when, um, in a specular specular map in some older game engines, you're actually uh, coloring what the what the reflection is and telling it. Um, how reflective it needs to be and what color it needs to reflect, but with metalness, it's much it's much simpler. So if it's metal, it captures the color of the environment. For instance, for in this case, the the environment is these trees. So the white becomes a picture basically of this tree, and the more rough it is, the um, the less of the environment is is visible. Um, so yeah. So generally, metalness should be either all the way metal or all the way non metal. But I'll set it back to zero for, for the time being and set this back to uh, 0.3 until we get a little further in. Oh yeah, so starting starting with a color map. Um, generally I can start with a color map so I can make decisions and um, masking decisions specifically about um, where everything where everything needs to go. So I know this middle strip is wood, this right strip is metal, and this uh, left strip will be glossy plastic. And then if I need to bleed them into each other, I can do that. So I I want, I want this, uh, this white over here, and say that the, the plastic bleeds over here. I can do this on the color map. Um, I don't want to grab like the clone stamp tool or something. Uh, capture some of that metal. 
paint that over here. Can expand the metal. And that, that's all well and good. But um, for the time being, uh, this decision has been made. I'm going to do these three strips of um, uh, metalless. And just for just for a bit of variation, I'm going to add another layer of paint. And this paint will be uh, covering a portion of the of the color map in order to um, in order to show you how that interacts with um, with other things. So I'm just going to grab like just a yellow swatch of color and just paint across the entirety with full hardness. Full hardness. Yeah. All right. Okay, so this this painted this painted bit is going to be its own material, and that's going to show you how paint interacts with um, materials underneath. And we're going to change how this interacts with um, with certain materials. So over the wood, uh, paint tends to fill in the cracks, um, but it, it doesn't stain the wood like it does. Uh, so, so what I'm going to try to do, or uh, yeah, I'll save that for later. Actually. Okay, so uh, first things first. This is my color map. And when applied, it looks like this. Not a lot, of, not a lot of information going on except for what color things are. So now we're going to jump into roughness. And roughness will be our first map. So I'm going to grab everything on so, yeah, so I'm not grabbing everything. I'm going to assign in the same amount of space um, what uh, what is what. So I'm going to first grab Grab from my color map. I'm going to Control Select on a layer that is the wood. I'm going to uh, once I've selected it, Control Shift C, which uh, which copies uh, everything in a in the box from all layers at, at the same time. And then if I go to this map and do Control Shift V, it'll paste in place. And paste in place is really important because it uh, it preserves any transformation. So when I grab when I grab this one, okay, control shift C. If I just control V, it'll center. But if I control shift V, it pastes in place. Okay. Um, actually gonna undo that real quick. Because I want these separated. Okay. And then I'll grab the paint separately. Okay, so now I have uh, these these four layers, um, and the background will serve as the plastic. And these four layers of different things of different roughnesses. Now, um, I'm not going to use these color maps. I'm just going to use these as my masking guides, because if I select everything in this color map, um, I know that everything over here shares, shares the same UV mapping space. So if I select this guy, uh, uh, actually I'm going to create a new layer above, firstly, the map. And I'm going to use Alt, uh, Alt on the layer to uh, to parent it to or child it to the um, to the metal. So when I draw on here, it only affects the um, it it only affects this this area of space. So the thing with um, roughness is that it exists, as I said, on a binary of one to zero. So um, I'm going to switch from in order to not get too confused. I'm going to switch from color color mode. In Photoshop, I'm going to mo image mode grayscale. I'm not going to merge, and this changes me to a black and white image. And note that my color sliders have been changed from um, hue, saturation, and brightness to just uh, white to black, and that's a lot, a lot less confusing. Um, so I know that white in a roughness map is fully rough, black is fully glossy. So metal, uh, this metal in particular is kind of grainy, um, but I'm going to say that it is. Um, it is, it's still kind of reflective, so I'm going to start at half reflective, and I'm going to see how that looks. Because uh, a big, big fun thing about uh, Marmoset and uh, having having something that you can preview your preview work in, you can test this endlessly. So I'm going to say that this this section of the of the um, of the color map is going to be of the material, I should say, is going to be 50% rough. Uh, the paint, on the other hand, will be glossier, so I'm going to crank that up to 75% black. That'll be shinier than the metal. Uh, the wood will be rough, 
because wood wood does not tend to have glossy highlights unless it's been lacquered or given a nice finish. So I'll take that one down to 25%. And then on the plastic, I'll say it's probably um, it's probably almost fully glossy. So I'll take that one up to uh, 8, 85%. Okay, so this is my new roughness map. Uh, not a lot of detail, but it's enough to get me started. I'm going to save this one, and under roughness, I'm going to apply my roughness map. And right off the bat, we start to see that we now have reflective differences. So the, the, the light's highlight is very strong on this yellow, but as we move into the wood, the highlight disappears and is diffused across, across the entire um, across the material board. Um, looking at the metal now, I think 50% is not shiny enough, so I'm going to go back, and easy as that, I'm just going to uh, bump that up to like uh, 65, Let's see how that looks. So a bit darker, save that. And now the, the metal's starting to, starting to reflect more accurately for what dirty metal might look like. Generally speaking, you should always have photographic reference up, and um, be looking at how, if you can, like find a video of whatever you're trying to make and see how the light affects it and how, how it looks in different lighting scenarios. Um, but for the most part, you know, just, just have photos up and uh, be paying attention to how reflective your stuff is. So this gives us a bit more information. It starts to differentiate different parts of the material from each other. Like even, even these things, which are nearly, which are pretty close in, in darkness, are have a significantly sharper highlight than this guy. Okay, so next step, we're gonna move on to the metals now. Metalus is, uh, a lot more simple. So we're going to use the same method that we used last time. Um, so select that one. And, uh, oh, that one's still there. So that's fine. Okay. Paste. And paste. And paste. And paste. And paste. And so I know that only this, this metallic strip is metal. So what I'm going to do is change that to black. And my background black. I'm going to make um, the wood black, and I'm going to make the paint black. And then for the metal, I'm just going to make it white. Let's save that into my metalist map. Plug in metal. So now the metal is very much differentiated from the materials beside it. So even though, if we look at the roughness map, the metal and the paint are similar in shininess, we have a completely different effect on the metal than we do on the paint. That's how, that's how these, um, these two different materials interact. So that's, that's pretty cool. And that's a, that's a decent place to, to get to, to represent realistic materials. But we're going to take it a little further, and we're going to add a normal map. So normals, um, when light strikes an object, the light, these light rays strike an object, they read the geometry, they read the wireframe, and they and that's how they decide. Um, light beam follows a ray, follows a ray, hits the hits the geometry, bounces off, and that's why we get these these highlights where the light is very strong, it strikes at this hot spot and bounces away, bounces to the camera, and you see a very strong highlight. What a normal map does is it is it um, it allows you to fake having more triangles than you do. So it. it um, when, when the light strikes a triangle, it knows that this is the angle it has to bounce off of in order to be, to be seen by the camera. But when you when you add a normal map, what you're doing is you're adding bumps in the geometry. You're adding bumps in the texture map for the light to be diffused by, to hit, and understand that this is a different angle. I'm not going to get too far into how to make a normal map, because there's a lot of really good tools that will do it for you. Um, for instance, Photoshop has a built-in normal map filter that um, I rec highly recommend using if you're not using um, Substance Designer or anything else that can generate normals. Um, sub uh, Photoshop's filter is, is pretty strong. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to do the same thing over again. So we're going to start with our color map, copy the different layers, and paste them in place.
Okay, so I'm going to show you okay, just how the Photoshop, how Photoshop's um, well, not filter works. I'm going to use it first on the wood because that's a pretty good, pretty good um, demonstration. But what it what it does is it um, it tries to read darkness as an indent and lightness as a as an edge highlight. So what you need for, need in order to use this filter properly is um, ideally something that's uh, that's that's very uh, with very defined highlights. Um, this this um, this one will be very good for this because these these tops are highlighted. And these blacks are obviously indented edges. Um, the most ideal you can get is with a black and white um, height map as as your base. So what that does, and I'll show you this before we jump into the wood, is um, in a height map. Much like the metalness, where white is uh, metal and black is non-metal, um, in a height map, white is up and black is down. So what you want to start with in a height map is 50% gray, because 50% gray is perfectly flat. And now, if I want to add a bump in the height map, what I do is I grab my grab my white and paint. This will be a bump. And I'll add black, and this will be this will be a divot. So I'm going to take this image, and I'm going to go to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. And this this will take a little while, depending on how powerful the computer is, but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that long. So what this does is, if we move this out of the way, we can see that this is a normal map, where um, what it's doing is it it is casting light on it is telling the computer how to cast light, where green. It's from the top down a slope. Purple is from the bottom down a slope. Uh, blue is from the left a slope, and um, pink is a right is a right facing slope. And then that that is um, that is flipped for going inverse. So now this um, this top facing slope is facing the same angle as this one down here. This purple is shared with this purple. This blue is shared with this blue. And this pink is shared with this pink. Um, yeah, so. Uh, what do is let that do its thing. By default, these should be okay. Uh, uh, you might, the first time you do it, have invert height unchecked. Uh, definitely check it because Marmoset uses OpenGL um, normal maps as opposed to DirectX. DirectX is generally the um, is the standard in certain programs. I'm pretty sure Substance Painter is by default DirectX. So. Um, just keep that in mind. I'll show you how to flip that later. But um, for the purposes of this, if you're using the filter, make sure you check invert height. So now I have this. And I'm going to save and show you how that looks on the model. So with, um, with the normal app slide, uh, you start to see these bumps that aren't in the geometry that are in the normal map. So if I turn off the corner in roughness and normalness, it's a bit more obvious. So what we're getting is where the light is striking, uh, where the light is striking, instead of hitting the geometry and bouncing, what it's hitting is instead this uh, this bump in the map. So what what the what the normal map does is it adds fake highlights and adds fake divots. So that um, you can add more detail to your model without adding more um, without adding more geometry. And this is what baking does when you're baking a normal map. You're capturing more detail than the low poly can capture, and you're adding it as this uh, as this texture information. So we'll, we'll turn everything back on. To square one. Okay. So now now I'll show you how to do that with. Um, the stuff that isn't just uh, just a drawing right now. So for the plastic, I'm going to say there's no normal map detail in the plastic, so I'm going to leave that as as a as, as a blank color. But the starting color, this is important. The starting color is if you switch Photoshop to RGB, is 255 blue, 126 red or green, and 126 uh, red. Now what this is is a perfectly you know, perfectly flat normal map with no no divots, no information. And what this what this amounts to on uh, if you break uh, if you break your um, Photoshop file into channels is 50% gray on the red channel, 50% gray on the green channel, and 
uh, full white on the blue chip. That's a bit more complicated than you need to know, but for the, for the purposes of setting up a blank norm map, just remember under RGB, R126, G126, B255. All right, so onto the wood. So the wood, I'm going to just try and apply that filter of 3D generate normal map. And we're going to see how that looks. Um, yeah, so right off the bat, what we're seeing is that it's understanding the lines here, and it's understanding that the blacks are divots. So those, that's doing exactly what we want. Um, and it applies it properly, so we're going to just save that and see how that looks on the model. Uh, not doing a whole lot. It's doing more more dramatically on these edge transitions here. So let's see if we can turn that up a little bit. Make sure I just uh, hide everything else. Yeah, so if you hide, hide everything else, you start to see that the, the reflections, now even though it's full rough, instead of getting the glossy reflection, what we're getting is the is these um, ridged reflections as the light adapts to the, 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 what the normal map is telling you. And it's, the normal map is telling the lights that there is a divot here, even though geometric appears not. So this is the, ne the next stage of detail, is adding normal map. Uh, let's see if we can clean that up a bit. So what we want to avoid is those, those um, purple and pink gradients on the side. That's a bump map. Bump maps are grayscale versions of normal maps, and the normal maps will give you more information. So, uh, generally stick with an old map. So I'll let you preview on something different. Detail scale affects how deep everything goes. Oh, what I should do instead. Right. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, grab this guy, copy him over here, and flip it. Transform. And flip horizontal. And what that does flip it down. So leave, leave this, leave the original center intact. Merge this weird uh, flipped version. And when I do the filter now, now it continues all the way across without adding those um, those weird lines because it, it doesn't understand the end of an image and, uh, and treats that as a as a hard divot. So this is, this is better, this is much better. Leave that the way it is. Um, and I will parent, parent this guy to that so we have a nice wood right in the center. That, that's the kind of information we're looking for. All right, on to the next one. So on to the metal, same process. So I duplicate the metal. And move it to left. Transform. Right click. Flip horizontal. Enter. Duplicate. Merge. And generate normal map. Cool. And we'll parent that. Now I can see how that one turned out. So that one's a lot more noisy, actually. Which is a bit unfortunate because um, so we'll need to do a bit of tweaking to make sure that we're not um, not getting too much of the um, of the actual media images and other other noise. In there. We'll undo that, and we'll go into um, we'll go into the side. Let's see if we can play with that. Blurred a little bit.
what I want is to minimize the amount of detail on the on the inside. So we get rid of this noise and just leave those ridges. It's a bit soft. But it's kind of good. It's kind of So I, I, yeah, I just need to capture all of it. So what it's what it's doing instead of um, instead of treating the uh, edges as raised, it's um, it's treating the, the uh, blacks as hard divots and the whites uh, and the whites as um, flat surfaces inside there. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do a bit of trickery in uh, oh, actually maybe not. Mm. Let's see if we can work with bump map actually. Bump map might be a little more of what we need. No, it's just too high contrast. Um, okay, we'll, we'll just work with. Um, Kind of messy model now. Um, but what the actually what the ideal the ideal way to do this would be is to um, is to work with this as a, as a height map where we draw over, we draw a little bit of white, a little bit of white. Say it like that. Start working with that. And if you draw over all of these as white, you can you can trick it into using this as a as a height map instead of a instead of a, instead of the, the original. Just shake that up a little bit. And now that you have this, you can copy and then drag it down, drag it down. This isn't ideal for everything. Um, ideally, you have a better normal map already. But for the for the purpose of this demo, this will be just like merge wherever you can. Okay, now. And the more times you duplicate, the more you'll have to work with. It's by no means an exact way to do this, but this will be quick and dirty for what I'm showing you. Just like I said before, we're going to use a 50% gray as the background. Merge these two again. We're going to use the normal method. Now, this is not going to be as clean as the other one. Actually, there's a first things first. We're going to move this above it. Slight multiply, just to get a little more, a little more detailed information there. Filter, we now what we see instead, instead of those those sharp divots around it, the the white is red as height and the um, the gray is red as flat. But using that instead. What we get is proper bumps. And that starts to look a bit more like what, we, what we're looking for. Okay, um, so the plastic I'm going to leave perfectly flat, but the paint is a special case where I'm going to add a ridge around the edge of the paint. So this is something like a decal or a sticker that's set on an object. Um, it's not going to be perfectly flat against it unless it's uh, unless it's been lacquered over. We're given another layer of um, like transparent material on, on top of it. So we're going to say this paint has some thickness. We're going to select the paint, 
um, select all the way around it, and um, we're going to expand our selection. Expand by eh, three pixels. So just a little ridge around here. Actually, no. Never mind. We're not going to do that. We're going to use we're going to use the same same template. Uh, paint goes on flat. So by default, we have this 50% gray. Above that, however, this is where we're going to select the paint, contract instead by three pixels. We're going to add white. So now, what we're saying is, at this point, it is flat. It is flush with everything behind it, and at this point, it starts to raise up. And then we are going to blur that, blur that top one, so we get a more um, a clean transition. So what this starts to look like in grayscale is a lump of something sitting on something behind it. And merge those. Filter 3D generate all now. And what we get is this transition from flat to bumpy. And now when we save the paint is a lump sitting on top of everything else. I say I want the paint a little thinner, and I want everything else beneath it to show through. What we can do in Photoshop is overlay normal maps on top of each other so that they influence one another. That's a little complicated, but I will I'll show you the, the uh, technique behind it. Um, instead of using this, we're going to um, hide the yellow and just use, use this map and a mask. We're going to change the blend mode to overlay. Right off the bat, you start to see that um, the normal maps start to blend together. Uh, the other important thing is that you need to go and double click on the layer on the layer to get layer options to come up and turn off the blue channel. Um, so blue channel is um, specifically used for um, deep crevices in normal maps, and um, overlay doesn't interact well with it. So make sure you're turning off the blue layer anytime you do this. So overlay. Off, uh, turn off blue channel. Now when we save, what we see is this paint starts to inherit everything behind it. A bit too much right now, so we're just going to duplicate this layer, change it back to normal, and uh, turn the blue layer back on, and just turn down the opacity. What we get is paint that appears to be sitting on top of on top of these other objects and still inherit their, their lumpiness. And maybe it's more it's more obvious in the wood. Um, we'll do a version of this where So now, now we can work with this where it is uh, influencing differently on the wood than it is on the uh, Okay, yeah, there we go. So now, now the um, 
it is thicker on the wood than it is on the metal, so we're not seeing any details. Okay, this. Change the mass. Paint slightly influenced by the wood, very much more influenced by the wood. Now say I want to be able to see through some of this object. And I want uh, I want the, there to be holes in the wood that I can see through. I'm gonna go back to the cognate and I'm going to decide where I want these holes. I'm gonna do that not with uh, not with paint, but with just uh, very very simple selections. I'm going to use, I'm going to use black, and I'm just going to make some circles. I'm going to say these are holes that have been knocked in the wood. This can be used for all kinds of things. So anything on your object that you need to be able to see through, just uh, just place some black on your color map where where you don't want anything to be. I'm going to merge these. Uh, select them. I'm going to go to my Alpha mass. So alpha, your alpha is transparency. So in, in an alpha mask, white is opaque and black is transparent. Save this one. And then my reset, there's a there's an option down here that we haven't covered yet called transparency. And in this case, I'm going to use uh, cutout. And by default, it uses the albedo alpha, so the alpha map, the alpha map color maps. So um, generally speaking, when you make a Photoshop document, it has these um, it has these channels set up for you already, with uh, RGB being the compiled version of red, green, and blue. If you go down here and add another layer, what it adds is the alpha. And if you turn everything back on, suddenly everything's red. And what that means is that the alpha is transparent wherever um, wherever red shows. So in this case, um, black is it, by default it's black. It's fully transparent. And save now. The object disappears because the alpha mass alpha channel has black. We'll delete that guy because I don't need it. Say it again. But if I go into my alpha, save it like that. Uh, turn off use our beta alpha. Add my own alpha map. Now. Oh, and by default it's set to channel A because that's the alpha channel. The beta, set it to red. Now I can see through the sphere at these parts where I added a where I added a mask. And this here. And turn off pull back faces. And I can see the inside. These aren't holes in geometry. These are holes in the texture. So this is useful for like if you have uh, crates. If you're, spokes that you want to not have individual spokes on a wheel and you just want uh, to have a flat plane with uh, spokes drawn on it you would uh, just draw the lines uh, make black in between them and add that as your focus that's fun um, let's say this uh, this yellow paint is radioactive it's green what does that mean for us layer Glowing green. Uh, already pretty nasty, but let's make it uh, let's make it more dangerous. So what we can do now is um, what we're going to make now is an emissive map. An emissive is much like everything else. It is a mask that says um, what is what gives off light and what receives light. Um, in this case, uh, black receives light. Green or um, white gives off light. It's one of the one of the few masks that you can add color to. So um, in this case it will give off green light and everything that's black will receive light and stuff. Um, copy all this. Um, in, in the file. Save as Back into Marset, um, by default, admissive is grayed out. 
and then drop down the box, check emissive, and emissive. Suddenly, with the intensity, and now turn off the lights. So now this gives off light instead of uh, instead of receiving. It's more fun with. Um, you have to turn on glow, you add glow to everything, so you can do that. And then black, fire, and affect the color. Um, you can affect the color manually if you just use a black and white mask. Um, but if you use a color map, you can, um, you can decide the color of the emissive before it enters. Um, so. um, then, then when you go to like uh, render, and you turn on, or actually camera, and you turn on fun, fun effects like uh, uh, flare and uh, boom. Start to see, you start to really see the glow. But yeah, that's just an arm. So just to uh, grab black for not glowing, whatever color you want to glow, the black part. It's great for headlights, it's great for uh, little details on like, flashing lights, on otherwise on colorful objects. Um, okay, and let's say you want to add, uh, you need to add windows. You need to add something transparent. Um, it's uh, it's not just a cutout because uh, game engines generally aren't very good at semi-transparency. It's very hard to do um, semi-transparency with only texture one texture setup. So generally speaking, you're going to need an entirely separate material in order to do um, uh, semi-transparent uh, glass or anything of the like. I'm just going to demonstrate that real quick. It's really easy in Marmoset. Um, just make a new material. Under transparency, uh, change to refraction. Um, so, uh, tweak the index of refraction, and voila, you have glass. Uh, this can still be affected by a roughness map, I believe. Uh, yeah, so slightly rough. It's going to smell the details of the other one, and can still be affected by a null. So, really easy, just make a new material and assign that. Instead of uh, instead of trying to um, make like half gray transparency, uh, save your save your um, save your alpha your alpha transparency. Save it to cutout, and make sure you're only using uh, hard black and white for things that just aren't there at all. Like don't use this for glass. Use this for um, hard emptiness. And then use a separate material. Apply it directly to um, like make your windows. If you're making windows on something. Um, make those separate meshes and add a, a material with, uh, with refractive transparency on it. And that'll look much better than, um, than if you're trying to combine them all into one material sheet. Okay, and that's about it.